the biggest thing was really um, a year's planning suddenly was happening. It was very real and there was no getting out of it at this point. <laughs> we had already been up for 20 or 21 hours before we even started the swim. Um, it's emotionally, it's, it's, it's a draining event, it's probably more so than physically. Yeah, the order was decided really by team captain Stephen and he really um, decided that uh, Andrew would go off first to get us to a really, really good start with, uh, with Derek uh, Bissett uh, going out in the number two slot, again, really fast swimmer. And they were both, I think, confident enough to swim in those, uh, those nighttime uh, hours. It got choppy probably within the second, third swimmer, literally as as darkness was lifting, the swell got up and it, it got it increasingly got up as we swam. So we were swimming into the worst um, right across um, and it definitely affected our progress. Second two swimmers um, was Stephen Gould and Gillian McAllister, two fantastically fast swimmers. Our fifth swimmer was Henry Bell and Henry is our fastest swimmer in reality. Ironically, we had been told we wouldn't see much shipping. Um, that was utter nonsense. <laughs> they were everywhere. I'd say up to a thousand vessels a day. To be honest, I think we all find them very comforting um, because in the middle of the English Channel, it's a lonely place, but we had these large ships just about everywhere all around us. I was in the sixth spot, the anchor spot, and uh, I might have only got one swim. As it turned out, uh, we all got a couple of swims. So after we'd all done our first leg, um, we weren't quite halfway across the channel, but we were, we were certainly in the separation zone, and we were making good progress. Um, in terms of total distance, at its narrowest point, um, the English Channel is 21 miles. We probably swam something in the region of 30 to 32 miles. We go out uh, really at slack tide, so there's not a great deal of movement, but pretty much as soon as we get into our swim, um, the tide starts pushing us uh, towards the east, and we're effectively, we're swimming in a straight line towards France, but the tide is actually pushing us towards no, Holland, really. When we're actually doing the swim, we are oblivious to where we are, what ship we're doing. It's only when we go into the cabin with the pilot and we look at on the, the satellite navigation, we can see what we're, we're doing. When you get to the end of the swim, um, really, you're at the mercy of the tides. For us, we're just plowing forwards as fast as we can. Sea conditions are quite lumpy. I think we were into uh, up to metre waves towards the end of the swim and the tide was going quite hard against us. The second swim for positions number four and five, they probably had the hardest swims and they swam really hard but made barely any um, progress over, over the actual ground. Um, swimming hard through water that's moving against you. Um, can be quite disheartening. And we could see the French coastline at this stage. It was within touching distance. Uh, we were fortunate that we were able to get in before the tide changed. Had that tide changed again, we'd have had a whole set of other problems and we'd have been swimming for probably another four to five hours. You, you kind of know when you've, uh, you've got there, suddenly the sea temperature is, uh, is noticeably warmer as you start to enter that shallower water. Um, and it's the most wonderful feeling because you just know We've made it, um, we're gonna get there. And once he touched the, the French beach, we, the rest of us jumped in, including Steve Lodge, our support crew, and we all swam in together. And that was probably the highlight of the, the entire swim for me. Quite often, uh, you hit the French coast uh, on a rocky shoreline, but we happened to hit um, the shoreline, <laughs> the coast on a lovely sandy beach. And it was wonderful to be able to walk up that beach as a team together um, and walk onto French soil. It's only when we produced the, the Union flag that the French people realised that we had swum from England. Yeah, it was quite unusual. We got, a, we got a message of congratulation from the French Coast Guard, which was lovely. When we produced the Union flag, we thought we might get a hostile response, but we didn't. It was quite the opposite. Um, and really, those people on, on that beach could not have been more complimentary. Uh, and and it, was a, it was a lovely, exciting and uh, palpable moment. And we got back on, on board the pilot boat and uh, boarded that, cracked a bottle of champagne. It took us three hours to get home, which we were really surprised. The boat was going flat out. It took us three hours to get uh, back to uh, Dover Harbour. 
We'd achieved our ambitions and um, it's another box ticked. Uh, one or two of the crew members were feeling a little bit green uh, around the gills and um, I've got to say, I, I did feel for them. The plan was that when we got back to Dover, we'd all go out for a celebratory meal um, in a pub called The White Horse where channel swimmers tend to gather, sign the walls, sign a book. Um, to be honest, we were utterly exhausted. So we had a very quiet uh, supper in the hotel and we were all in bed by 10 o'clock. <laughs> It was great to see uh, the amount of messages of support that came in from friends and family. Um, Facebook went mad and our Just Giving page went absolutely mad as well. So it was lovely to see uh, what a warm reception we got from everybody and, um, and the amount of donations we got as well, which is after all why we actually did it, was uh, to make a difference and to, uh, to raise some money for Alzheimer's. The team were incredible. Um, Derek Bissett, Andrew Allen, Gillian McAllister, uh, Henry Bell, Sean Barley, our support crew, Steve Lodge, Rebecca Bell, um, are really the, the mama of the team, Joe Lewis. Um, without doubt, the, the pilot, Michael Oram, uh, the CS and PF. Sean Barley and Nirvana Spa need special uh, mention here for the overall sponsorship of all logistical costs. Um, and uh, again, to everyone who has supported us in fundraising for uh, Alzheimer's Society, thank you very much indeed.